Well, good morning, Evangel Church. We're going to continue our discussion on Proverbs from Tim Keller's book, God's Wisdom for Navigating Life. Uh, yesterday, we continued our, our uh, look at the seven deadly sins, specifically picking up um, the topic of gluttony. And before we go into today's reading, I want to kind of remind you something we saw yesterday, that gluttony does not have to do with only eating and overeating. We um, almost trivialize what gluttony is in our lives when in reality it is the evidence of a deeper sickness that is really pretty pervasive in society. And it's the inability to delay gratification. Now that can come in so many areas of our lives. But when we cannot yield ourselves to the Lord and have to have what we want when we want it and as much as we want of it, there's a problem. And so bear that in mind as we look at the text this morning. So the text this morning comes from Proverbs chapter 23, verses 29 through 35, and it says this. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaints? Who has needless bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? Those who linger over wine, who go to sample bowls of mixed wine. Do not gaze at wine when it's red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. In the end, it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. Your eyes will see strange sights. Your mind will imagine confusing things. You will be like one sleeping on the high seas, lying on top of the rigging. They hit me, you will say, but I'm not hurt. They beat me, but I don't feel it. When will I wake up so I can find another drink? Again, Proverbs 23, verses 29 through 35. Rock bottom. The drunk is a staple of comedies. They hit me, but I'm not hurt. They beat me, but I don't feel it. But addiction is not a comedy, it's a tragedy. The delirium tremors, the injuries from falls and fights are depicted here in sad detail. All addicts start with just one drink. So how can any drinker avoid the trap? When wine becomes more than a good food, but something one gazes at and lingers over for its qualities, it has become almost sexual in its allure. Drink, or any other food, can become a deep consolation, a way to find relief from anxiety. The insatiable need sharpens over time, but the addict is helpless. When will I wake up so I can find another drink? Overcoming addiction is never simple and takes a lifetime. Paul was right when he pointed to the ultimate consolation that we need. Do not get drunk on wine. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. It's from Ephesians 5:18. Being filled with the Spirit means seeing Christ vividly and joyfully. That is the joy that makes it possible to cast all other consolations aside. Addiction can take many forms. What do you do to handle stress, anxiety, and unhappiness? And then he shares this prayer. Lord, let me take woes and sorrows to you, not to food and drink, not to sexual release, not to video games, not to late night viewing. Here of life the fountain flows. Here is balm for all our woes. Amen. Well, I go back to the question that he just asked in this. What do you do to handle stress, anxiety, and unhappiness? Um, I am a stress eater. Uh, when I get stressed, I tend to want to eat more. I tend to want to eat things that are um, uh, spicy, that are uh, maybe unhealthy in a lot of ways. And what I found is when I'm turning to those physical things instead of turning to the Lord, I lose control. Well, maybe it. It, it shows that way in your life or in other ways. And so again, I ask you the, the question, where do you go with your anxiety and stress? Let's run to the Lord. Let's be filled with the Holy Spirit and find our satisfaction, our peace in Him. Well, I pray that you have a blessed day. I pray that you take this before Him and allow Him to reveal your heart and find peace in that. Remember, as always, we love you and we miss you.